Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and today I'm talking about something a little more sentimental than usual as I show you how you can honor your past loved one with a handmade wooden urn. There are many options for types and styles of urns. Green Meadow Memorials supplies various types of beautiful urns, but they also understand that sometimes due to financial reasons or just simply because people may want a more personal touch, some families may choose to make their own wooden urn for their loved one. So today I'm sharing with you how to make your own simple wooden urn with just three tools in a standard 1x8 board. For a project like this, I recommend using a good quality hardwood, but those can sometimes be pricey. In this video, I'm using a standard 1x8 poplar board, 4 foot long, and it was a little under $15. However, if you have access to a local hardwood store, you may can find some other hardwood options like walnut, oak, or cherry, and have them surface it for you for about the same price. Besides the 4 foot 1x8 board, all you need to complete this project is a router, a drill, some wood glue, painter's tape, 4 wooden screws, and a miter saw. A sander also comes in handy, but it isn't 100% required. Now let's get to the build. To get started, I brought my 4 foot 1x8 board to the miter saw and set my saw's bevel to 45 degrees. I double checked that my miter was square to the back fence. It's important to keep these cuts square. Then I trimmed off the edge of the board to give me my first beveled edge. I measured off this edge 6 and 3 quarter inches and cut again making sure my bevel was not parallel to the first bevel. They should be in opposite directions. To make a continuous grain pattern around the box, I flipped the board over and trimmed this edge before measuring and cutting my next piece. This way the outside of the box will all be the same side of the board, making a continuous grain effect. I did this for all of my cuts. For my second piece, I cut six and a quarter inches long. Then I repeated this process to make two more pieces, one six and three quarter inch and one six and one quarter inch. By the way, I've got the tutorial and the plans for this project linked in the description below, just in case all of the numbers are too much in this video. So now I have two six and one quarter pieces and two six and three quarter pieces. I dry fit them together to make sure that the corners lined up. The two shorter pieces will be opposite each other and the two longer pieces will be opposite each other to make this box nice and square. Then I laid them out on my workbench upside down, alternating sizes and making sure that the grain matched up. I placed them so that the sides were touching and applied painter's tape along the joints. Then I flipped it over and applied more tape to the inside joints like shown to help prevent glue from getting all over the inside corners of the box during glue up. I applied wood glue to the joints and taped the box up at the corners making sure to keep everything lined up well at the corners. If you have some clamps or even a ratchet strap, it may help to keep the corners nice and tight if you clamp this box tight while the glue dries. While I let the glue dry, I adjusted my miter saw bevel back to 90 degrees and cut two pieces of 1x8 to 7 and 3 quarter inches long. I installed a 30 degree chamfer bit into my router and adjusted the depth so that it would route about 3 8 inch deep onto the edge of the boards. Then I clamped these pieces to the workbench and routed along the edges 
only on the top sides. This routing step is totally optional. You could leave the board edges squared if you don't have a router, or you could also cut this by adjusting the bevel of your miter saw to 30 degrees and trimming this chamfer. However, the router does give a more consistent result versus the miter saw. Once these edges were routed, I waited for the glue to dry on the box completely, then I removed the tape and sanded all of the pieces well. A sander is really helpful for this step, but you can also hand sand these pieces if you don't have a sander. The main thing here is to sand and remove any excess glue squeezed out during the glue up process. Another key part of this project is getting the miter joints tight. Sometimes miter joints are tricky, so if there are any small gaps in the corners, I like to apply a little wood glue along the joints, smearing it into any cracks or gaps. Then, while the glue is still wet, I sand it. This allows the wet glue to mix with a little sawdust and creates kind of a matching wood putty that fills in the gaps. Once everything was well sanded, I applied wood glue along the top of the box and centered one of the seven and three quarter inch boards on it like shown. If you have clamps, you can clamp this in place until the glue dries, or if you have a heavy object, you can place it on top and that would work just as well. Once the glue was dry, I gave it and the bottom piece a coat of finish. I used a beeswax to keep the natural poplar color, but you can finish with a clear coat, a stain, or a wax of your choice. Once the finish was dry, I centered the bottom onto the box and pre-drilled four holes along the sides, just like shown. I made sure to keep the bottom piece nice and centered before drilling each hole, just to make sure that everything stayed lined up. Then I attached the bottom with four two inch wood screws through these holes. Wooden urns are designed so that the bottom piece is screwed in place and can be removed to place the ashes then put back on. Once the urn is completed, you can leave as is, but Green Meadow Memorials has also created a personalized plate to put onto this specific urn based on its dimensions. These plates come in the finishes shown and are easily installed with the included finish nails. Simply center the plate where you'd like and lightly hammer the included nails through the pre-drilled holes in the corners. I will leave a link below for you to check out these personalized plate options. A wooden urn doesn't have to be complicated to make on your own. With just a few common tools and a standard sized board, you can honor your past loved one with this do-it-yourself wooden urn made with hands that love them. If you'd like more information on this project, there's a step-by-step -step tutorial included in the link in the description below, as well as the links to the options for these plates. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching you guys.